Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Comics Remix proudly brings to you its 14th episode of The Lockup, WWE Top 10 Entrance Themes, hosted by Junior Ruiz, Big B Brian Adams, and here is the Top 10 Entrances. And if you're not down with that, we got two words for you. Suck it! Welcome, everybody, to our uh, 14th episode of The Lockup. You're welcome, by the way. You're welcome. Why am I welcome? Oh, for the inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the yeah. intro. You're welcome. All right, uh, Damien Sandow. You're welcome. So, anyways, people, welcome to the 14th episode <laughs> of The Lockup. If you didn't understand it, you were just like, what the hell is wrong? Why are these guys having seizures? Um, this uh, is our second part from last week. Last week, we did our top 10 entrances in the WWE. This week is our top 10 entrance themes. Yeah. Now, let me be very, very clear that an entrance theme and an actual entrance are two separate entities. Totally. You know, because you could have like a bad entrance, for example, we'll say um, The Undertaker. We'll just use him as an example. Right. Th- the way the guy enters is right. one thing, but the song but might the theme, the, yeah, the theme the is just, you know, that. eh. You know? But, uh, so anyways, going into this, um, as we said last week, you know, I picked 10. Brian picked 10. And we just kind of sat and decided who should be on the list and what order. Um, and basically the kind of impact that the songs have left, you know, for the for them actually to make it on this list. You know, it's not like, hey, I like that song. It's on there. No, yeah. what's the reasoning behind it? You know, because as we said last week with an entrance, a theme can also benefit a superstar depending on how they go about uh, taking advantage of the theme they have. Or how well it goes over with the fans. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I mean, and there's some that we didn't include on the list that if we would have did a top 20, definitely would have been on there. Yeah. But, like, one that comes to mind that I'll just go out and say it's not on the list, I just think about it, is Randy Orton. Yeah. You know, the voices. But, uh, and another one was R-Truth when he used to come out and rap on the microphone. That was very, uh... I like it. I like what he does now still. Yeah. But, you know, that's neither here or there. We're here for the top 10, not the what could have been. Not the honorable mentions. Correct. And uh, starting with number 10. Number 10. A little, you know, a little... A uh, little dab of Hollywood there. Yeah. Some golden stuff. Some, some gold dust. <sighs> but, uh, yeah, who, who could forget his entrance music? This it's very, the like... Shattered dreams. And yeah, and it's like... It's just like this eerie start to it. You know, and then, you know, like... It's just... I don't know. It's just like something you hear about it. It, it, it signifies, oh God, I can't even find the words. Like, you're you're going through like a trip that's not everyday normal. You know, just the way that the notes hit and the bass, and it's something special. Like, especially with the shattered glass mm-hmm. production. Like, oh God, I like it. Just reminds me for some reason of crystals. You know, like you're walking in a, like a mirrored hallway or something. Something just, it's a mind f. It's, I don't know. Help me out here. It's something that sticks with you. I mean, that's, I, I will gold dust that whole. The, the, I know what you're saying. It's, it's, I'm having trouble verbalizing what I'm trying right. to say here. But uh, it's it's definitely, in my opinion, a memorable theme. Oh, very. Um, you know, as you're probably hopefully hearing it in the background, hopefully I got that magic to work. You just listen to it and you just realize there's, there's just something about it. It sets the tone, you know? Like, Absolutely. I don't know. I, I can't find the words to describe it. We shouldn't have to. Here's like four seconds of it without right. us talking. You know, there you, there go. you go. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's just something about that song that you know, and, and that's one of the carryovers from the Attitude Era that's mm-hmm. technically still around. We felt like it had to be in the top ten, but it definitely wasn't. You know, one of the higher on the list. Right, but it I mean, it's hard because some of these songs are just. A throwaway. So much of it's just throwaway, and there was a, a lot that we talked about. This was one of the guys we both agreed on that should be on the list. Correct. Leading us into number nine, one of the most uh, famous themes in general, not just in wrestling, but this music like is just known everywhere. What's the actual name of it? Do you remember? No. Um, well, it's the the Ric Flair theme. Shoot, Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Flair. Everybody knows Ric Flair's music. Dun 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 dun. You know, it's just like. I don't know. It's 
when you think about it, obviously the first thing you think is Ric Flair. You think greatness. First thing you think is woo. Yeah, of course. But you think greatness. I mean, the the theme is so awesome that even now that his daughter's wrestling, she has incorporated elements yes. of the theme. It's like a re- theme like if they can take Ric Flair's theme and remix it into like today's pop culture music. Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, but yeah, Flair, like it just, it just symbolizes greatness, man. It, it's you know Absolutely. something something big is on the horizon, you know, regardless of what it is. It just you know the big drums and it's it's, it's epic in nature. Everybody, yeah, good one, nature boy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You didn't I, catch was, that, did you? I totally didn't mean to do that. But it, it just you hear Ric Flair's music, man. You know something good's coming. Absolutely. And speaking of memorable songs that have also been used outside of wrestling, number eight. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> the famous graduation theme. Yeah, the totally. Macho, the Macho Man, Man, Randy, Randy Savage. Savage. Uh, very, like, like, grandiose kind of. Yes. You know, a more of an elegant theme than you're going to get on the wrestling list, I would say. Which is funny because Macho Man was never in... Like, his posture, though, was one of those... When he wrestled, it's he wrestled with grace, if you really think about it. He got, got to the ring, you know, he pointed, did the spin, but he was always on his tippy toes. Mm-hmm. Even when he wrestled, you know, like, if you paid attention, there was times where he wasn't, like, a, what, a, what I like to consider a loose body wrestler. He's very, very, very... Very rigid. Yeah, but at the same time, very graceful. Mm-hmm. You know, so his theme really matched the way his style was. And then, you know, it was one of those themes that, like, completely complements him mm-hmm. and Miss Elizabeth. Correct. It worked well for the duo. And you could obviously hear that in the background, so you know what I mean when I said the graduation song. It's very, like, regal. Yes. Like, very majestic, very mm-hmm. royal, and stuff like that. Well, I mean, that's what Macho Man was. Absolutely. You know. Even before he was King Macho. Yeah, the Macho King. It was great, man. It's yeah. one of the greats. The cream of the crop. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Moving on, though, we go from majestic royalty to down and dirty, I'm going to kick your ass music with number seven, Stone, Stone Cold, Cold Steve, Steve Austin. Austin. Probably nothing, the first note in any uh, theme that's so memorable isn't really, even really a note. It's just glass shattering. Right. When, you, <sighs> when you hear that glass, yeah, exactly. <laughs> When you hear the glass like this, it just, it's, you know what it is. It's somebody's going to get their ass kicked. Right. Playing, and that's not a pun on Mark Henry song. No, it's not. Um, but, uh, which I actually have downloaded because it's by Three Six Mafia. But it's, it's just, it's symbolized that, that song is simple as it whoop is. A can of is about to be, is are going to be whooped and beer is going to be drank. Yeah. Texas rattlesnake is here. That's basically it, it's it's no nonsense. The same note. It's just we don't have time to get cute and add stuff. No, this is what it is. This is how you're gonna get it. Yeah, in notes. your face. That's it. It's just it, Austin's music represents like you know, bad three pretty much. Absolutely. You know, I I can't even think of another. There's not a bad of a higher caliber in my opinion. No right. Than Stone Cold Steve Austin. I remember when they tried to remix it when he uh, when he joined up with Vince after WrestleMania 17. Mm-hmm. It's horrible. It was horrible. Yeah, you can't mess with something when it's you know don't Just leave it alone. If it ain't broke, there ain't no need to try and fix it. I totally agree. That brings us to our number six. One Someone that, uh, I, I fought for this on the list. Yeah. And I believe that what won you no, over... No, you didn't fight. The, I just well, didn't think about it. You're like, okay, how about this guy? I'm like, oh, You're yeah, right. let's It wasn't go. a fight. I just told you You were like, no. Him. And then I was like, well, what about the impact of the song? Right. As yeah. far oh, as yeah. a wrestler, he hasn't had as great of an impact as his theme music has. His the- Yeah, no doubt. His theme music hit and, like, it transcended what theme music was because you heard it. People were talking about it on the news. It was on The View. It was on Soup. It was or on E or whatever, all those... All those daytime shows, people were just, they knew it. And it became known, like, as a dance in itself. And, like, oh, people are doing that. Like, when Young Jock had that motorcycle thing. Remember how Tom Cruise was doing Uh that dumb motorcycle move? It kind of went there to that level. It transcended wrestling. Because everybody was busy doing the Fandango. Fandango. You don't have to say it because it's playing. 
Yeah, do, I know. Do, do, do. It and was just, awesome, man. Everybody was doing it. And it was just like... And it was simple. so great that even when they tried to move him away from it, yeah. they realized the it was fans, a mistake and brought it back. Yeah. The fans were just like, no, it's not going to happen. This, you know... I mean, it's such a good theme that it's elevated his character. He even does the Fandango. Right. Does like, he really? Yeah, he does. Now when he... I haven't seen him recently. Right. But the last time I saw him coming up to the original theme music, he won the match and then was outside the ring, like leaning against the crowd, fandangling with the nice. crowd. Nice. Very Which cool. is awesome, you know, because he's... Cool. So did they move him away from Rosa Mendez finally? Because that yeah. was the ball, the span. Yeah, she's, like, with, no. uh, she's with Adam Rose now. That's right, that's right. But yeah, so he's back to the single fandangling. Good. But As that song be. was huge, man. What was it called? The Cha Cha Cha? Yeah. Is that the name of the song? I, I believe so. That thing blew up on iTunes, man. Oh, yeah. It was one of those themes that, like, it had to be on the list. Yeah. Just for its, like, cultural influence, you know? Yep. It's Bigger than Mambo number yeah, five. Yeah, so weird, man. It's such it's a weird thing because I remember when Fandango was being, you know, teased and, and he was coming, you know? Yeah. And I was like, And it would just play just in the background, stupid. though, when they showed the vignettes. Yeah. And it would play in the background, but you didn't think anything of it. Because you're like, because they didn't show what Fandango looked like. Yeah. They just had like the outline of him. You're like, what is this? What the hell is a Fandango? It's like, are they seriously doing some like, what the hell? And like, are they he pushing movie out. tickets? Yeah, you yeah, know? right. <laughs> like, so you didn't know what to think, and then he came out, and then the song just kind of like it hit. It was just, just, it was there. It was infectious. Yeah. The next thing you know, the nation is Fandangoing. Do you know what the nation is not doing? You're not doing any basic thugonomics. No. No. Which leads us to our number five. The five moves of doom. Yeah. You can't see me. Number John Cena. Number John Cena. Look at number five, John Cena. Now, Cena is on this list because he's had actually two entrance themes that are both very memorable, um, which is also why he's at number five as opposed to being uh, a little lower on the list. First one being in his rapper days back when he ran SmackDown which was basic thugonomics mm -hmm. you know whether you liked him or you didn't it was him rapping his own song out and who did like basic thugonomics were like he didn't do this at least one time I'm sorry you yeah, were no, a wrestling fan uh, I'm gonna credit that for being the reason I chose to stop watching wrestling <laughs> yeah. but, but then, now his new song it inspires like joy in some, yeah. and then complete hate in others. Right. And to even that they've curtailed it into you know the John Cena sucks like perfectly yeah. with me. It's just awesome, man. Gotta love the fans. Yeah, that new one. Doo, 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 doo. The one that's playing right now for you, but it, it, you know, it, I don't know. He just he's found a way to make those songs work for him. You know, he's one of those characters that. I don't think he would be him if he didn't have those songs. Like, those songs, you don't pay attention to them that they're there, but when you sit back and think of, okay, what if he didn't have that song? Then that's when it's like, why is he, then he's not John Cena. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's it's a, it's a minor thing that makes him who he is, but without it, you wouldn't know who he was. Right. In my opinion. No, I agree. It, it's, you know, it's, right. when you hear that song, you know John Cena. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the, the first thing, so I'm not really too familiar with, but his new song, as soon as it hits, the bah, bah, you know who it is. Yeah. You know, that first note, it's one of those real memorable songs. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We do bad impressions of it, but totally just bad. Playing. Another four seconds of silence for the John Cena song. Which I'm sure people are telling us right now, like, the lockup song. Probably. The Anyhow, moving on to number four. Number four. Um, this song, I really didn't hear it. Like, when he would come out on TV and he'd do his grandioso entrance. Oh, dude, that was I one of the never things really, that hooked me. I, I could never really hear the song. I just knew that when he hit that note, you know, he did the arm thing. But finally, I was like, you know, I'm going to go on YouTube and just listen to it. And I listened to it, and I was like, the song is awesome and it's awesome it's that's finn balor's second song with nxt actually oh is it his second yeah, song? yeah they have it listed on youtube as version two. Oh wow um and it's the guitar riffs um i mean holy cow so great it's to the point because you know i used to be in the music and stuff where i was thinking about taking his song and chopping it 
to make certain parts available for 16 bars using certain parts as the chorus and then going back and rapping over it that's that's when i know that this song is something special to me when i can rap over a song the song is like but finn balor's uh the interest song i mean and that's that's one too that i don't think the demon character would exist as great as it does without yeah. his entrance music because he's found a way to incorporate mm-hmm. it into his actual entrance absolutely. and his performance. That's absolutely. And this one, four minutes, please. Did you say four minutes? I said four moments. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to say a moment of silence our, for some reason. and then our, uh, our number three, this is another song, much like Fandango's, that has just... It's his Americana. You know? Yeah, it's it's transcended the cultural lexicon. And that would be... I'm a real American. You should give it a little louder. There was no vibe. It's okay, I can't sing, so I, I'm glad they didn't hear it. But they're hearing it in the background. Totally. Hulk Hogan's original theme when he was with the WWF. A real American. Dude, that song came out when... I mean, we were like, serious war, you know? That was, uh... We are in the midst of the Cold War. Right. It wasn't a war per se. Yeah, you know what Because there wasn't actual fighting, but yeah. But, I mean, he came out. I mean, that was Ameri- baseball, Superman, American Pie, Hulk Hogan. You mean apple pie? Did I say American Pie? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> apple pie, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, apple pie, baseball, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Absolutely. Superman. But, I mean, Super or Superman? Hulk Hogan symbolized America back then. Absolutely, man. I mean, that was another one. He transcended, and his song went with him. You know, the whole MTV era of the 80s. Everybody knew Hulk's song. Yeah. Everybody. And the way the camera would just run up to his face, and then he'd just stand at the ramp and, you know, point as he's walking towards the end. I mean, man, that song is a classic. It's a classic. Movie. It's a classic so much that it even got used. In Eastbound and Down. Did it really? Yeah. I don't watch that. Oh my god, man. When this is over, I'm going to have to show you the video of it. I highly suggest anyone listen to this show. When we're done listening to it, you're already on YouTube. Check it out. He uses it uh, for his entrance as a AAA baseball player in Mexico. Okay. Oh, dude, it's amazing. I got to show it to you. Kenny Powers. Nice. Love it. Nice. But it was one of those things like it's, you know, still. Still, here you are, 30 years later, and that song still gets used for stuff. Yeah. Because it just, nothing screams America bigger than that song. Of course, I guess, you know, I am a real American. It's, can't get no American than that. Right. <laughs> Unless you go, you know, not, They didn't even do that with Hacksaw Jim Duggan. He was all for America. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah his flag on the 2x4. That's what it is. Moving on, number two on the list. This is another uh, superstar who decided to uh, voice their own theme. Uh, the original version was actually done, I don't know if you know, by Sensational Sherry. Yeah. It's the same lyrics, it's just, it just didn't sound right with Yeah, her. no, it didn't sound so right. So Sean said, let me go ahead and try it. And number two is Heartbreak is Shawn Michaels. You know, I mean, uh, a sexy boy, that's what it's called. Yeah. A sexy boy. And dude, I grew, like, growing up, I was singing that song. Yeah. And you know, you, and you gotta do the dance where, like, you're just kind of shimmering your hips. I'm just a sexy boy. I mean that's that that song, dude. If you weren't a kid and, and like singing that song and doing a little shimmy, you weren't a wrestling fan. Like who wrestles? Dude, Shawn Michaels, that that song and that you know what? He is not including no, not even because he never even really used the DX theme. DX was more for when he came out with yeah. Hunter or when Hunter came out. Shawn Michaels always, always used his system. original yeah. theme. Yep. And to this day, whenever he shows up, it's still never changed. The only time he showed up and didn't have music was this past WrestleMania. Yeah. You know, because he was the surprise. But uh, that's another one. Like, it's, dude, it's sexy, boy. Like, Shawn Michaels, everybody knows that song. You know, even if you're not a wrestling fan, you can start humming the song or just throw off a couple bars and people know which, what it is. You know, especially if you're flexible enough to do the... Like when you crouch down like you yeah. do the ring and do the, the pose, you know. <laughs> but, uh, I mean. That's definitely a memorable song, man. Oh, most. I most. mean, obviously, that's why we put it at number two. Yeah, but our number one song, I, we had to argue on this one. Like, cause I was like, I, I, I put my foot down on that, man. 
I almost pulled the boss card on it. <laughs> almost. Um, Bump you and the boss card, son. <laughs> um, number one top theme song, in my opinion. And you know uh, another reason why I needed it at number one? I was at work a couple days ago, and I was riding along with somebody learning a new route. And they're like, oh, just put on your music. You know, it's all good. I played that song. He didn't know what it was. And he's like, oh, that's some cool rock music. And I'm like, okay, whatever. But, dude, hey, it's just, it can, it symbolizes so much. And that song that we're talking about is this one. It's, dude, it's a great song. No, it, it really is. I mean, it, like I said, it, 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 it means so much. It started basically the Monday Night War. <laughs> it symbolized coolness. It showed you that there was a change coming. The, the, the notes, the guitar riffs on that song alone were just very different. Very dark. But yet, supposed to be meant to be like... like a, it, it was just like... You knew I feel like it to. almost sounds like porno music. No, it does. It does. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. Absolutely. Which is probably another reason why it went over so well. <laughs> that was... To steal what we said about Stone Cold, you heard that song, you knew problems were coming. You know, and what I like is certain members of the NWO got their own versions of it. You yeah, know, like totally. Macho Man's had Macho Man's voiceover in it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but it was just—I mean, that song comes on, man, and the fact that Scott Hall made a walk to it, right? Like, you know, like, dude, how do you make a walk to that? But he pulled it off. Yeah, that's it. and that's why they're on the entrance list. From they're last number week. one. Yeah, they, they both guys, uh, both NWO is on entrance and themes, as some of the other ones are. Stone Cold was on both. Finn Balor's on both. You know, but I mean, what? That's only three. Yeah, that's it. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of crossover. I I had the, out of all the wrestling songs, though. Although Finn Balor and NWO both in the top four. Yeah. Um, that is the only wrestling song I've ever used as a theme song on my phone, or as a ringtone, I should say. No, that's a lie. I used Cult of Personality for a while, too. But I wouldn't have known yeah, that song existed if it wasn't for Punk. Are you serious? Honest. Yeah, because I, I was never into that stuff when I was wow. younger. Wow. So if it wasn't for Punk, I wouldn't have, using that song, I wouldn't even know that song existed. But that, that does it for our top ten themes. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this episode as well as last week's. Go back. Uh, download these songs. You know, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I've got a lot of them in my, uh, in my iPod. I've got some that we didn't mention, obviously. Million Dollar Man. Yeah. Yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of good music that came out of wrestling. A lot there of good, is. You know, some honorable mentions, you know, tons of funk, man. The funk is on the road. Yeah. Somebody call mama. That's good stuff, man. No, it is. It really is. It, you know, and that leads us to wonder five, ten years from now what songs are going to be. Right. If we decided to do this again, will some of these guys still be on the list? Will be on the entirely new list? Will some of these guys take over? Right. You know, I mentioned Dolph Ziggler. It's, it's great songs, man. Great stuff. Goldust was on our list. Yeah. One version that wasn't was the remix when he came out with Stardust and had a piano playing. Yeah. And it turned like it was just like this. It was great. Yeah. But you totally. Stick with classic on that one. Yeah. I mean, you've only got so many spots. Right. To dull out, so. So that's our list for this week. Uh, uh, eventually, at some time in the future, when we get time or we feel like it we will be giving some attention to the divas oh yeah so ju just so people don't think we just neglected the divas i wanted to include it was it was hard for, yeah oh yeah uh, <laughs> i wanted to include one a specific diva uh on the entrance list last week but it got vetoed out but we'll do a divas one and i'm already telling you right now that's my number one choice i know it's not yours i'm curious to see who your number one would be because as far as the Divas go, I really don't see anybody that's doing anything as different as that Diva did. But we'll leave that till whenever we do that yeah, episode. We'll see. We'll see. Um, until then, email comments, questions, concerns, email me at junior at comicsremix.com, brian at comicsremix.com, alex at comicsremix.com. We're on facebook.com slash comicsremix. Follow us on Twitter at comicsremix and at the spinner rack. Follow Remixed Reviews on YouTube as well as on Instagram. Um, sign a petition at the bottom of this YouTube video in the description box. 
Uh, JD efforts to CM Punk. Let's make it happen, people. Um, that's all I got. B, you got anything? Check out. Did you mention Alex's toy reviews? Uh, yeah, I just said check out Remix reviews. Oh, right on. Hey, that's that's good. I just wanted to make sure we got a plug in there for our boy. Yeah, we got him. Sweet. Two. Two. Sweet. Sweet. We're out. Peace.